And on today's Community Conversations, we're going to be talking about OLLI, which is the Osher Lifelong Learning Institute at Granite State College here in New Hampshire. And with me today, we have Tony Ann D'Souza. She's the director, the program director of OLLI at Granite State College. And we also have Joe Hendry, who is a frequent OLLI presenter, retired educator and naturalist. Um, and I'm just really glad to have both of them here to talk more about what to me seems like a hidden gem that we'd like to not be hidden. And I'm sure for a lot of people who love this program, they would love more people to participate and be part of uh, a really great community resource. So we're gonna get into that and a whole lot more on today's show. So thank you both of you for joining us on Community Conversations and uh, hope the lights aren't too bright here. We're just really having a chat here. Um, Tony, and let me start with you and just, uh, you're newly here from I think Las Vegas, if I'm correct. Um, correct. Tell us a little bit about sort of, first off, just the transition to New Hampshire and about sort of, uh, you've worked with Ollie before and kind of the importance of, of Ollie in your life. Yeah, so um, I started working at the Ollie program in Las Vegas uh, in 2016 as their program coordinator. I um, became their program manager and it just became something really important in my life. Um, I found it invaluable and I love participating in a community of lifelong learners and as that's something that I value. Um, so when the program director position opened here, at Granite State College. Um, I was really excited to apply and um, they wanted me to come join them out here. I came and moved out here in November. Um, it's been a little colder than what I'm used to, yeah, a lot colder, <laughs> just a yeah. little bit, yeah. um, but we're really enjoying it. Um, I've met so many wonderful people, um, both at Ollie and in Manchester where I'm living now. And um, just really excited to help this program continue to grow and the volunteers and members have done such a wonderful job building their um, program out here in New Hampshire. So welcome to New Hampshire. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, it was kind of a rude welcome, maybe <laughs> depending on a different time of year, but you got the worst of the weather. It only gets better from here. Yeah, that's what I was told, so I figured yeah. might as well get it out of the way first thing. <laughs> yeah. And it's great to have uh, young professionals coming back to New Hampshire or into New Hampshire, because uh, New Hampshire sometimes has an issue where we can't retain young professionals. So I'm sure, the relationship with you and Ollie is mutually beneficial. Now, to back up a step, because I do, you know, want us to actually get into for our audience, uh, what is Ollie? So it's the, I said it's the Osher Lifelong Learning Institute, but if you could tell us a little bit about the mission and the organizational purpose um, that you guys carry out. Yeah. So the Osher Lifelong Learning Institutes are programs. Um, there's 125 of them, and one in every state, including Alaska and Hawaii. Um, <laughs> And they are programs for uh, older adults, those 50 and older, who want to take educational opportunities for the enjoyment of learning. So there's no credits, um, a little bit of homework sometimes for fun, but, but there's no, no tests. grades. Nope. There's no grades. Mm -mm. Yeah. yeah, no grades at all. It's yeah. a lot just for the enjoyment of learning. So there's opportunities out in the community, in the classroom, now over Zoom. So um, it's a great opportunity for people to get to know each other and to learn something new that they didn't get to do um, prior to their retirement. Great, now that, that helps clear things up quite a bit, but of course then it bears asking uh, the word Osher. It, it's, so the program's named after uh, a person who was a participant, or could you tell us a little bit more about uh, how that ties into this whole equation? Sure, so um, Mr. Bernard Osher is a philanthropist and he um, has the Osher Foundation, that's house in San Francisco. Um, he and his wife had an auction house out of Maine that they um, had for many years. And he also um, went to college in Maine, and that's where he, the Ollie's actually started. Um, but he moved to San Francisco and started the Osher Foundation to provide endowments and grants to lifelong learning institutes throughout the country. Um, many of them already established, but mm -hmm. this gives them the opportunity to grow, flourish, to have connection to each other, and to be sustainable for the long term. So our endowments mean that we can continue on for years and years and we don't have to worry about um, having that financial strain on the programming. Wow. That's such a great structure for the organization. So now that we know a little bit more about Ollie, I think we can turn things over. And Joe, you could tell us a little bit about your background, how you became involved with Ollie here in New Hampshire, um, and just give us a little background about how that connection was made and, and how that came to be. Sure. I um, 
a retired educator, as you mentioned, and it's been nine years, which doesn't seem possible. <laughs> um, and friends had invited me to come to a class um, that was offered on a Saturday in those days while I was still working, and I loved it. It was a day-long investigation of China, as a matter of fact, <laughs> and I thought, as soon as I retire, I'm joining, and that's what I did. So here uh -huh. I am. And here you are. So there's a, a phrase that I heard or we had mentioned before we started recording, which is come for the classes, stay for the f friendship or stay for the for friends. The friends. Yeah. So tell me just firsthand how that um, has, has rung true in your experiences with all Sure. Ollie. I've met a wide variety of very interesting and terrific people since I've been in this organization. Um, we're an organization of people who love to learn and share our passions. And many, many of our presenters, including myself, are edu retired educators because that's what we love to do and that's what we stayed doing. Um, and so I have made friends through Ollie that I hadn't met prior to that. And um, I think predominantly for me, the, the idea of sharing, learning with people who also love to learn and think is the biggest draw for me. And, um, it's, it's just been a very positive experience. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It sounds like a great way to learn something, sure. make friends, uh, right. lifelong friends. Now, I also heard that you're running uh, or presenting three work or two, two workshops this coming spring. up in the spring. Right. So it'd be great to have examples of some of the courses that are sure. part of Ollie. So maybe tell us about, about sure. those. Yeah, this spring I'm going to be offering two hikes. And uh, I have a natural history background as well as science and math. And um, we will be visiting uh, Pulpit Rock in Bedford for a geology and glacial history hike. It's a tremendous place to see all of that going on, or having gone on. And then another one will be to the Kincannawit area in the Kincannawit Forest in Dunbarton. And that's going to be a spring hike for uh, interpreting the natural history of the woodlands in the spring. We'll be identifying plants. We're going to be um, hoping to see some mammals, perhaps. And we yeah. will be doing bird watching. And we're also going to learn a little bit about the cultural history of the area, because there are two sawmill sites there left over. That just sounds like a great combination of natural, yeah. enjoying our, our planet, right. a little bit of exercise, but it's not too strenuous, right? Yeah. Just very easygoing accessible walking. Absolutely, yeah. except for the black flies. But, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing we could do about those, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, so before we go too much further, I, I really want to put this out as early as possible in the show, although we're already quite a bit in, which is how can people sign up? If, if, if what you just described, Joe, sounds appealing to someone watching, uh, where would they go to sign up for those workshops and to look at the full uh, course catalog, if that's what you call it? Sure, so um, Ollie is a membership-based program, yeah. so um, they can go and look at our catalog and become a member to join classes at our website, ollie.granite.edu. Yep. Uh, and there are options on there to view our digital catalog, to um, join a class, to have a gift membership, to read more about us, including um, our monthly newsletter that's put together by our volunteers, so there's plenty of opportunity to learn. Um, they can also um, call the office at any time, and our team is more than happy to walk them through it over the phone or help them register. Yeah, it's funny. Yeah, sometimes over the phone is still sometimes just the better way for mm -hmm. some people, I'm sure you find, to, they just don't want to go through all the, the menus, but the website seemed like it was pretty easy to navigate it from is. when I was going through. So Definitely. that's such a huge thing when it's easy and it's not like a barrier to entry. So I think that's really important. So uh, back to the topic of you presenting. Tell me a little bit, I mean, I've taught workshops like at Concord TV. We did something with Ollie back in yeah. 2015. Yeah. But share with our audience maybe a perspective what it's like to be presenting a topic, to be sharing a passion, and to see other people who get to see it kind of through your perspective. Sure. I'd, be, I'd love to talk a little bit about the, the wide variety of classes that we offer. Yeah. Um, I, for example, have offered um, a range from electricity to a class on um, analogy, similes, and metaphors. You have the right brain for this. Um, I have, um, and then one of the classes that I did, I want to talk about this for just a second, yeah. is uh, it was called Thinking Like a Scientist. And at the end of that class, the classmates said, 
what can we do more? Let's not stop here. And so then we partnered with UNH, with um, New Hampshire Department of Forest and Lands, with the, I want to make sure I put them all in USDA, and we started a group called the Ollie Senior Citizen Scientist Group. And so we set up a series of workshops, never planned to do it initially. That's what I love about Ollie is like it all like grew. And so then we set up a series of workshops and we've trained over 50 of our members how to, rep how to recognize and report invasive species. And so that became what we call a special interest group, which I think you're going to want to know a bit more about in a moment. Mm -hmm. But anyway, so we meet semi-informally now. We hike together. Um, we remind ourselves of what we once learned. <laughs> and um, so that, that's, I think, one of the strengths of OLLI is it's flexible and ongoing and supports the kinds of things that we members bring up and say, hey, can we do this? And they do. That's huge. It sounds like there's that synergy where it's when members say, hey, this is, might be a good idea for a workshop, that it's not someone else who goes, this is what we offer, and, and puts this right. out and says, th right. this is it. it that it's yeah. member created, truly a, a community effort where we go, That's right. hey, we're interested in this topic, and if you can get a few people to, to, who sign up for it, and does it usually take a minimum number of people to run, or does it depend on the program? Could it run with? Four people, six people? Some, usually, I, I'm, well, the ones I do, I usually say eight, but I'm yep. not sure. And yeah. then also the Zoom opened things up quite a bit. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it really depends on the presenter, the topic, and right. things like that. Um, yeah. But our presenters are so generous, and even if they say, I would love a minimum of five, but we say we have four people who are so interested in your topic and they're so passionate, they'll say, yep, let's bring the four, let's talk to those people, right. let's create that learning environment for those who are interested. So. Um, we, we try to get as many people in the classroom as possible to participate, sure. but yeah. it's, it's, it's a wonderful community and people are fully generous with their time. Yeah. So just hypothetically, and, and this is maybe a little foreshadowing, but a workshop that could be this studio that we're in right now, and it could be experts such as Concord TV staff mm -hmm. going, here's what a television production studio is. And for our first session, we're going to review the equipment. And then in our next session, we're going to make a PSA video. and then. It would it, sell it, out. It could be instantly. something just like that. Yeah, right? It would. Yes. It would sell out immediately. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> well, that's good to know. So there might be some foreshadowing there. Um, there could be something in the works behind the scenes. Yeah. But because um, it does get the wheels spinning as if you're someone with a passion or something that you're an expert in and you're looking to just show it to people and have people right. learn and have people also become passionate, just like you were talking about with your workshop presentations. Now, you had mentioned also, Joe, the uh, kind of the special interest clubs. I saw that there's book clubs, travel clubs. Yeah. So that goes Quite beyond just the workshops concept, but maybe give us a few examples of what some of the other ones might be sure. um, that you know of. Right. Yeah. I, yeah, a special interest group is a little different because after it forms, there really isn't a fee. It's, it's an independent kind of thing, but they usually grow out of a class mm -hmm. or someone's presentation. Um, I, I have a list here because I, I hadn't even realized myself that just in the Concord region alone, there are many opportunities. It's okay. I think it was just your mic pack. That's all right. Yeah, as long as it didn't no smash. Worries. As long as Matt can still hear us back there, then I think you're okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting yeah. on it now. All yeah. right. So here in the Concord region, we have Movie Club, yeah. Writers Club, yeah. Technology Group, Ollie Garden Friends, Book Club, quilting group, and Concord Area Hiking, as well as the travel. And those, so those are groups that meet at some regular basis. It's in our, catalog, uh, in our website mm -hmm. so that people can find them and join if they wish. Mm -hmm. And it just gives people a chance to sometimes try something new or continue something that they've already loved doing. That, that's so great. Um, I'm glad that um, we're able to learn more about this. Remind me again, just I'm going to do this two or three times probably, is the website again that people can sign up. Do you happen to also know the phone number just off the top of your head? If I not, do. It's okay. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Some people don't. That's okay. If you didn't. So yeah. um, our website is ollie.granite.edu yep. and our phone number is 603-513-1377. Yep. Um, and uh, to um, start to register for classes, um, we have ongoing enrollment and you can do that um, and class at any time and classes begin February 28th. Um, but we have classes running through June, 
So yeah. members are more than welcome to join when they see something that excites them, to bring a friend, to try out a course. Um, so that's right. You can so that. check out yeah. the website and give us a call. Awesome. Now for the presenters, if someone sees this and says, well, I want to be a presenter. I want to host a workshop or do something like that. Um, is there a form they have to fill out, a process? What would they need to do to inquire about that? So we have a presenter form. Um, it actually is currently open. So it will be open through April 15th. Yeah. Uh, and they can go on our website again, ollie.granite.edu, yeah. and access it there. Um, and we just ask a few questions. So a little bit about you as the presenter, a short biography, a short description about your course, not a full curriculum, just the basic idea of what you'll be presenting in the fall. And yep, um, for the fall. Yep, for the okay. fall. Great. And yep. uh, that begins, fall semester begins in late August. So. Yeah, it'll be here before you know it. Too. Exactly, like, yes, we're planning early. <laughs> I know for Concord TV things, we're already, and Matt, you're behind the scenes, but Matt helps run our summer camps, and all of a sudden, boom, mm -hmm. it's summer camp season. Mm -hmm. Like, I think we have to send our information to Parks and Rec soon for that, but it's sure. like all of a sudden, boom, summer's here. So that yeah. means fall is not far behind it, which you're going to like New Hampshire Falls, by the way. I'm excited to see that. I just missed it by like <laughs> two weeks. <laughs> you just saw the bear trees. Mm -hmm. It's gorgeous. And, and of, of course, I'm sure in the fall there will be some kind of scenic nature uh, foliage type of some kind of workshop, I'm sure, something like that. Yes, we have plenty of spring birding yep. courses coming up this semester. And I know yep. that those presenters are planning on doing some fall courses as well to do some nice hikes, um, see the areas, and, and try out some new things. Awesome. Hey, that's. Real quick, one other thing that I noticed that I wanted to make sure I brought up was uh, scholarships. Yes. Are there scholarships available? Is it, I assume it's like a needs-based scholarship that people can apply for? Yes, um, it is a needs-based scholarship. Yeah. Um, they just need to call um, mm -hmm. our phone number and um, talk to me over the phone mm -hmm. um, or write an email. And I'm happy to um, provide a scholarship. And that is a course fee scholarship, so the membership fee um, is $40 per year paid yeah. by the, the individual and I'm happy to help them get to any courses that they'd like. Okay, awesome. So you guys have really lowered the barrier to entry here right. and Correct. the whole point is that anyone who wants to participate in this, it's easy to sign up, easy to become a member, that anyone is welcome 50 and over uh, to participate in this program. Yeah. Yes, yeah, we want everyone to participate and if there are barriers to that, we want to make sure we're able to break those down or work with them and get them into those courses and active in our community. So what would you say before we wrap up, Joe, if you could, I won't make you stare at a camera, but what would you say to someone, <laughs> one of your peers who just hasn't heard of Ollie, I'm sure you've recruited people into the program before. Certainly. What is it that you typically say to them? What, what typically, what's your pitch, basically? Well, I usually start off by saying, you ever heard of Ollie? <laughs> and often they'll say no, and I'll get, well, wait till you hear about what is offered. I, I am involved at, uh, you know, in a Y program, uh, silver sneakers and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And so I usually say, do you know about Ollie? And then they may or may not have heard of Ollie. And then I'll talk about the classes and the opportunities and the, and, and the socializing too, which is, is, has been really a nice thing. There are mug and muffin kinds of meetings. There, yep. You know, things that are a little less formalized, but an opportunity for, and game days mm -hmm. um, for people to come and, and, which I think are going to happen now that COVID is starting to mm -hmm. wane. Yes. Right? Yeah, so, we're getting so. a little bit more back into the classroom. We're right. really excited yeah. for those opportunities. Yeah. Right. Which as long as if people feel safe about those types, which everyone can make their own decisions, obviously, but mm -hmm. I would think the social aspect, the social emotional aspect is huge right now that people we're seeing it with all age groups, our generation, we're seeing with all age groups, mm -hmm. people wanting to socialize. Yes. Um, I know my parents' generation, they, people like that, they're not listening, hopefully, but they could all use friends. <laughs> they could all meet more people. Mom and dad could meet, meet more people. I think we all could meet new people we all these could days. This, we all could at this point. And so if you can do it in a way where you're also learning and, yeah. and discovering, and it just, you become a more well-rounded person. So I think Absolutely. what you guys are doing is, is so commendable and just a, a really important asset to the community. So um, is there anything I missed or something that you really want to promote or share, anything that we didn't have a chance to, to go over? I'm not thinking. I think you've got the gamut. Yeah. I think you guys have done a great job telling us about the program. Thank you. Uh, hopefully that we can bring new people in to participate in Ollie. There may be a partnership with Concord TV down the road, which I think is really exciting as well. Yeah. 
Um, so I want to thank you both for coming on the program. This has been really great. One last time, Tony, I'm going to ask you website and phone number. We're trying to really hammer this Sure. Home. So again, yeah. uh, courses begin February 28th. Um, but enrollment is ongoing, and our website is ollie.granite.edu, and our phone number is 603-513-1377. And social media tags as well? You don't have to remember what they are exactly. We're Facebook on Facebook and, and Instagram, yeah. And Instagram, okay, awesome. We'll make sure we follow you guys if we weren't before. So with that, I would like to thank uh, Tony Ann D'Souza and Joe Hendry for joining us on today's program. I've learned a lot, and... Um, a program like this a lot of times just brings a lot of energy and enthusiasm, uh, and I'm so glad uh, that they were able to take the time to join us on today's program. So thank you again for telling us about Ollie. I hope you all learned something and will look into that and participate uh, if that's something you're interested in. So until next time, thank you for watching Community Conversations.